Welcome to part 5 in this 8 part series. Look, successful investing requires that you gain an advantage somewhere in your investment process. In part 5, I'll reveal the best option strategy used by option buyers and sellers. This strategy is likely the closest you'll get to gaining an advantage just like the top 1%. In part three, I revealed the four areas where the top 1% find edge. Number one was in the investment idea, and you saw how much money, time, and resources are spent developing these ideas. Number two was the conscious decision they needed to make in order to invest in options. I showed you Steve Cohen's portfolio and clearly pointed out that not every investment idea warranted the use of options. There is a clear reason why the top 1% use options. Number three went further and highlighted that there is obvious analysis being done by the top 1% to choose the appropriate option. They are not simply guessing here. Once this process is complete, the top 1% enters an options trade. Because of the size of their portfolios, it's usually a big options trade. When you highlight a pool of these big options trades each day, it becomes unusual options activity. Here's an example. On June 13th, someone bought 8,500 DLR October 21st 105 puts for $3.50. Remember, when you see this trade, it went through the process I just laid out for you, which means there was likely a good amount of work done on the investment idea, analysis to figure out whether it met the requirements to be an options trade, and further analysis to pick the exact option. Now, let's back up for a second. The top 1% will only buy an option if they have an advantage, meaning there is an opportunity to profit. But what exactly does opportunity mean? The definition of opportunity is when your expectations differ from the market's expectations. This can be anything, but since we're talking about options, it means the market's expectations of the potential move in the stock price versus your expectations of where the stock can go. More specifically, the top 1% are buying options for the big and unexpected move. So this trade is loaded with very valuable information. Not only does the unusual options activity tell us the stock they think will make a big move, it gives us the direction of that move and the amount of time that the top 1% thinks they need to catch the move. There's also information passed on by the size of the trade and the option strike. And there's one more very valuable piece of information that only an experienced options expert understands. You see, before the unusual options activity pops up on a screener, it goes through a process that only a few people have been a part of. When executing a big options trade, the top 1% go through an investment bank where a highly skilled options trader must make them an offer. It then reaches the exchanges and pops up on a screen. As you can imagine, there is a lot going on in that execution process between hedge fund and the investment bank. I was that highly skilled trader, manning the balance sheet of Bank of America. I was also the hedge fund trader, buying those options. From that unique experience, I can help you back out the target stock price used by the top 1% with a high level of confidence. This makes the unusual options activity incredibly valuable and can lead you to those big winners we need to succeed at buying options. In fact, analyzing unusual options activity is a required skill for you to gain insight on where the top 1% are making their biggest moves in real time. And in the process, you inherit the work and the analysis done on the investment idea. So whether or not you buy or sell options, you should layer your investment process by learning to analyze unusual options activity. Avoiding it puts you at a disadvantage. In part six, I'm going to show you what a great options trade idea looks like, explain why unusual options activity is only part of the process, and then reveal the most important asset you need to win with options. I'll see you there.